I recently purchased a couple ocarina flutes from the popular video game Zelda Ocarina of Time, and I've been obsessed with playing it. It has become one of my top prized possessions. So I ended up buying another, and another, and well, things got out of hand and now I have a small collection. Anyways, while playing it, I started to imagine the flute automatically playing itself. Can I make that happen? Is that even possible? I became obsessed with wanting to make that into a reality. I was super worried about this project, I didn't even think it would work. There are several big challenges to overcome. First off, how will I robotically control the air into the ocarina and cover the holes? How can I accurately measure and capture this odd shape for perfect alignment? And there's many more challenges after that. So I decided to start with the air blower since if that works, I can continue the project. I had to think about it and I 3D modeled the shape and it took several 3D printing iterations to perfect until finally I was able to hear the different notes. But what about the odd shape measurements? Wait a minute, in my last video, Creality sent me their ferret 3D scanner that attaches to your phone, and I got some good 3D scanning results, but I learned not everything scans the same. I knew it wasn't going to work on the reflective surface of the ocarina. The reflections start to confuse the 3D scanner. I first need to dull that shine with the frosted glass spray so the scanner can actually read the accurate dimensions. I also learned that you need nice, even lighting. It's very important for the 3D scanner. So after a few minutes of 3D scanning and processing, I had a 3D model that is proportionally accurate to the same scale and dimensions of the real life ocarina. So now I can design some way to hold the flute and correctly align to the holes. And this process took a while and here are just some of my tests, revisions, and failed prints. But I see this all as just progress, I'm finding the correct way that works. And this is a solenoid. It's a coil of wire that electricity turns into an electromagnet, attracting and moving that center bar. This, combined with the correct diameter of a safety rubber end cap, might help plug the holes and block the airflow, creating different notes. Next, I wrote some simple code on the ATtiny84 microcontroller, using a transistor to turn the solenoids on and off. Okay, at this point, I've got something. It ain't a lot, but it ain't nothing. I just kept going and going, and the breadboard wiring got pretty complicated pretty fast, so I converted the layout into a schematic so I can print the design on a PCB board. To do this, I spoiled myself and I got a brand new and improved CNC machine. I just like the quality and features for the price of this machine. The assembly was pretty straightforward. I chose this machine because I like the solid frame, the easy to attach and unattach drill bit holder design, and best of all, it came with a handheld controller so it makes setup and printing really easy. After the assembly, I then 3D printed a holder for the PCB board, and I can share this design with you too if you want. So here with this controller, you can see how easy it is to align the starting position, and then load a file to print from the SD card. I'll add a link to this same CNC machine if you're interested. But why a CNC machine? Well, it can quickly drill out the holes, carve out the traces, and then cut out the board. This is much faster and safer than harsh chemicals or using professional PCB manufacturing. Up next I started to solder the components to the board, and things got messy really quickly. But it did look much better and organized after 3D printing the housing for everything. I like how I designed the controller to detach, because maybe in the future I'll come up with a new design I might want to try out that layout. And I don't know about you, but I think the perfect holder for this Zelda Ocarina would be a treasure chest, just like in the video game. And it's a great way for storing and hiding the batteries in the circuit board. And thinking ahead, I knew I was going to have to make small tweaks, so I used magnets to hold down the solenoids, which allows for adjustments to be made. At this point, I feel like it would be a miracle if this actually works. So first, I want to test the keyboard. The bottom eight notes are the major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, with sharps on F, G, and A. So here we go, here is a song that hopefully you can recognize. I hope you got it right, that was Hotel California. D kidding, but okay, moving on, so let's try another.
And here's a challenge. Comment below if you can name all of these songs. So far so good, but how does the machine sound when it plays on its own? To be honest, I think me playing the keyboard sounded just a little better, but maybe that's on me and my programming error. But let me know what you think sounded better. So this has been a super fun side project. It's something I just really wanted to make. It's been so many things. Challenging, rewarding, frustrating, educational. It's been everything at the same time. But in the end, it just makes me happy, and I hope you enjoyed this weird project and video. It's been fun. Let's hang out again sometime. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.